negotiate to stop that from happening. How do you square those two things? Well, to be clear, the president has been and remains... Shut down lasts. We're winning. That infuriated Speaker Boehner. Take a look. We get the Wall Street Journal out, and it says, well, we don't care how long this lasts uh, because we're winning. This isn't some damn game. All right, and then here you are caught on an open mic with Senator Mitch McConnell a little bit earlier this week. Take a listen. I think if we keep saying we wanted to defund it, we fought for that, but now we're willing to compromise on this, I think they can't. And we're going to win. We, I think, well, I know we don't want to be here, but we're going to win this, I think. Senator, I brought those two things up side by side for a reason. Winning, losing, battle of the talking points, dueling cable appearances. Do you in Washington, do all of you have any idea how totally disgusted the American people are with these antics? Yeah, no, I think these are all legitimate concerns, and I think really we should point back to where the root of the problem is. The root of the problem here is, is that we are not passing appropriation bills like we should. We have 12 different appropriation bills. We should pass them one at a time. Government should never shut down if we're doing our job appropriately. So really what we need to be saying is why are we not passing spending bills the way we should do it? Do you take any responsibility for the tone, for your, your part in this? Well, I think that uh, in order to have compromise, the other side has to negotiate. We've been willing to compromise and negotiate. The other thing is, is we don't control the spending bills. The House has been putting forward spending bills and still continues to do so. It's the Democrats in the Senate who refuse to pass individual spending bills. And that's what you're supposed to do is pass individual spending bills. You're somebody who is uh, an emerging national figure. The latest Quinnipiac poll had you actually winning the presidential preference poll among Republicans. Do you think this strategy should shutting down the government, which two-thirds of Americans don't like as a tactic, even if they don't like Obamacare. Do you think that's potentially undercutting the Republican Party's chances of winning something beyond the House of Representatives, either the Senate or the White House? I think it's extremely bad for the president to shut down the government, and he's the one shutting it down because, frankly, he's unwilling to compromise. We are willing to negotiate. We're willing to compromise. The president says his way or the highway. So ultimately, I think it is bad for the president. I think it's bad for both parties, but the only way to get to a resolution is to negotiate. We're willing to negotiate. We're every day passing bills to reopen government, and every day Harry Reid's vetoing every bill we send over. We've sent over six bills this week to reopen government, and he dismisses them out of hand. So we're the ones trying to open government, and the Democrats say keep it closed because they like it being closed. They think they can beat up on us politically. Well, if they like it being closed, why would you then fall into that trap? I mean, if they think it's actually hurting you more, and polls suggest perhaps it is, well, why are you allowing that to happen? Because there are important questions. Obamacare is going to cost $2.6 trillion. We have a $17 trillion debt. We think these things are important and worth fighting over because they're not inconsequential. Some economists say that we're losing a million jobs a year just because of the burden of our debt. Is it worth standing up and saying the emperor has no clothes, we're out of money, and that we should start to balance our budget and not spend money that we don't have? Yeah, it's absolutely important. And so sometimes you have to fight for what you believe in. Very quickly before I let you go, as you well know, there's a debt ceiling vote on the horizon. Will Republicans let this country go into default? I think it's irresponsible of the president and his men to even talk about default. There's no reason for us to default. We bring in $250 billion in taxes every month. Our interest pay payment is $20 billion. Tell me why we would ever default. We have legislation called the Full Faith and Credit Act, and it tells the president you must pay the interest on the debt. So this is a game. This is kind of like closing the World War II memorial. They all get out on TV and they say, oh, we're going to default. They're the ones scaring the marketplace. It but, sir, we even if... scare the marketplace. We should never default. Let's say your plan There's works no and you can default. pay the interest on the debt and you don't have a technical default. Wouldn't there be dramatic consequences on the economy anyway? It may not be the letter of the default, but the spirit of it? 
Yeah, but look at what happened in 2011. Our, our credit rating was downgraded, but you know why? The reasoning they gave was because we have too much debt, that we weren't cutting enough spending, and so they downgraded us. It has to do with the big picture of how much debt we're accumulating. It isn't so much these deadlines that the market's worried about. The market's also worried about a $17 trillion debt and that we're not acting fiscally responsible, responsibly and we're spending more money than we bring in. That's what the market's worried about. Senator Rand Paul, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you for your time, sir.